Now, <clears throat> we've set up some cameras. I also want to use the camera for our um, for our Bryce character here, this onboard camera. So if I switch to that, and he's currently looking off in this direction. So really what we want him to do is instead of looking um, off in the other direction, we really want to have him looking um, at the car as it approaches. Now there's a couple of ways that we can deal with this. Um, there usually is. One way, uh, and maybe the first thing we want to do is let's use this uh, green th control here and back off so we can see that we are actually not at eye level with this guy, but we're a little bit below eye level. So I think one of the things we need to do is go into our origin settings and make a couple of adjustments. But um, before we do that, let's just notice something. If I zoom in with this green control all the way, we're looking basically due north in our world here. And really what we want to do is we actually want to look due south. We want to see the car coming. And the only time we're going to be using our, our Bryce standard uh, character's onboard camera is at the end uh, when uh, the car is approaching, uh, approaching him and coming to a stop. That's what I plan to do. So in this particular case, it makes the most sense to orient his onboard camera not only higher up on his body so that it's at his eye level, but also so that it's looking in the opposite direction. So we'll do both of those at the same time by using the origin settings dialog. So I'll click on the origin settings dialog. I'll go to our camera origin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise it up a little bit using the hand. So with the hand selected, I'm just going to come up a little higher. And then I'll back off and back in so I can kind of see it looks like I maybe need to go just a little bit higher. I'm just watching to see how I go. I'm almost at eye level here, but not quite. I just like to get a little bit higher. Good. Okay, so that has us at eye level. Now the next thing I would like to do is change the orientation. And so currently, with the green one selected here, we're looking straight ahead. When I switch over to the red one, now we're looking down the red axis. Here we're looking back on the green axis. Well, in either case, that doesn't really help us. We don't we don't want to look 90 degrees different. We want to come around and look uh, 180 degrees behind us. So I'll use this rotation tool, which moves us in 90 degree increments. And so I'll do that once, do that twice, and now we're looking along the green axis, but in the opposite direction. And then I'll move back out so that we can see. And as you can see here, using our, um, just our our regular camera in the uh, origin settings dialog box that he's actually now facing well you can't really tell but he is facing in the opposite direction okay so we've done that we have both positioned the camera and retrained it in a different direction we'll click apply and now what you can see is that from the onboard camera that belongs to that character you can see that now he's looking in the general direction of the car so at this point now, what I, I will do is I will switch to the orbit tool. And it looks like I'm going to have to back off a little bit. So I'm just using the scroll wheel. You could also use the dolly tool if you wanted. And, uh, and I can just kind of choose the view that I want here. So that we'll see the car coming right up on us. And maybe we'll just use this. OK. And um, I could, of course, with my onboard camera still selected, I could still zoom in a little bit if I want a little bit of a tighter view. Click away and click back. OK, that gives us a little tighter view, and I like that. So that's going to be the last view that we look at. But remember now, this track marker does not extend all the way out. But we're not necessarily following the car either. If the car is just going to roll right up on us, we may not actually have to train our camera on it. Well, let's try it and see what it looks like. And then we can decide. I'll choose Mini Cooper. 
and I will move this all the way out so that we can kind of see what happens when we get to the end of the animation here. So the car is, let's see, well I don't see the car at all. It's supposed to be following the Mini Cooper but it's not. Oh, it's because we're interesting. I didn't expect that to happen either. It, why is it doing that, I wonder? Ah, that's very interesting. Okay, um, let's switch back to our free camera here for a moment, which remember was over here. So maybe we'll go to our price on board camera. We'll go back to the beginning and where in the Dickens is our Mini Cooper? Where'd it go? Why don't I see it here? Let me try and back off. Oh, it popped in all by itself. That's very weird. Huh. I'll tell it not to follow. Let's see what we get this time. Now if I come out here now, I can see the vehicle coming in. Okay, so I think that's a little bug. So we've just identified a second bug here. Okay. All right. So we've, but now we have all of our cameras set up to follow the vehicle. And all we have to do now is switch between them during the animation. Now, of course, we can do this manually. So I could maybe start from our first aerial view camera here and then press play and then I'll just select different cameras as we go and see what it looks like. So that's more or less um, how I would choreograph this scene. So uh, in the next movie, we'll talk about how to uh, build up uh, our camera switcher track and uh, automate the camera changes. So that's what we're going to do in the next movie.